Hey everyone, today I have another storage tech contraption. This one is the main hall of the storage I'm working on. So it's not the full storage room yet, just the main hall. It's something similar to what we have on SciCraft, so one chest per item. And I designed it to be as user-friendly as possible. So you can access all the chests from just standing on these carpets over here. You don't need to jump or anything. Uh, even the top ones are really easy to access. Now, you might be wondering why a chest hall? Um, because I've shown most of the tech required to make a fully uh, item call based uh, storage. But the problem is with item call, there is not a really good way to make a nice UI. So either you have to make it binary where the user somehow has to know the binary code for all the items, or you make it using a decoder where it takes a bit too long. So even chess halls like these, even running to the other side is much, much faster than a, an item call would be. So at least for the main storage, I want to have one chest per item. And maybe for the bulk, if you need like a double chest of shulker boxes, then you can request it from bulk using an item call. But still, this storage is really different from uh, other types of uh, main halls. So it's completely binary coded. There is not a single sorter in this thing. All the sorting is going to be done remotely by the uh, variable sorter I've shown previously. So you can see on the top, there is a bunch of binary decoders. These are uh, seven bits. And the last, last three bits uh, are going to be for determining which... Uh, of these ice streams in the slice we are looking at. Now, these decoders, I don't want to go into too much detail. I've shown them multiple, multiple times before. But binary decoding has a whole lot of advantages compared to regular sorter-based storages. So uh, if we look at a single slice over here, then we can see that every single chest has a comparator reading from, from it. And that's really, really cool because it allows the storage to do something that no other storages would be able to do. So because you are able to know what each chest has, uh, how many items each chest has, then you can do something like, for instance, uh, up to half the chest, let's fill it with items. And then once the chest is more than half full, then let's start filling it with shulker boxes instead. And that's something you could, that would be really hard to do if you didn't have a, uh, comparator, a um, central system. So you can even do more. You can do, let's say, if the chest is almost full, then stop filling it with items or stop filling it even with shulker boxes and start putting those shulker boxes in the bulk somewhere else, like in the bulk I showed last week. And you can do even better. Let's say that the user uh, removed a couple items from here and you have some in bulk. Then you can know that because you have the comparator reading from it. So if you see that you have a uh, chest that's not full and you have those items in bulk, then just refill the chest from the bulk. So you can do some really, really smart storages using uh, things like that. And the way you activate a, a layer like this is you have, the, as I've shown before, the uh, binary decoders on top. And once a binary decoder activates, what it does is it pulls out these um, ice streams over here so that the items can fall in the hoppers. And it also activates the comparators. So let's try it right now. So all these... Um, the hoppers are either unlocked or their uh, ice is pulled away so that the items can fall on them. And all the comparators are now activated. So they have a redstone lamp. Redstone lamp conducts redstone. So now they can uh, transfer their signal to the main uh, central logic. And now if I flick it off, then you can see all these switch to observers. So now the comparators can't transmit anymore. And this also uh, improves lag a whole lot. So the main lag cause, there's two main lag causers in the storage systems. One is hoppers that have items in them that are pointing into a full chest because they try every tick to transfer. And here that will never happen because once a chest is full, then we just stop putting in items. So this hopper here will never really have items inside unless it's transferring. And the second main lag causer is uh, hoppers that uh, are just looking all the time for items above them. And here this happens quite rarely. So this hopper here is locked. Same for this one down here. And there's really only three hoppers per four chests, so six in total per slice, that are looking for items. There's this one, this one, and this one. So it's even more lag-friendly than typical storages. So hopefully by now I've got you convinced that you can do really cool stuff by having a comparator reading from every chest. But to do that cool stuff, unfortunately, we need some pretty complicated redstone. So over here we have the brain of the machine. This is what decides what to do with the uh, shulker boxes that come in from the variable sorter. Now, when a shulker box comes in, there's four different things that can happen, depending on either how filled that shulker box is and how filled the chest down there is. So if the chest is less than half full, we always want to get items. So what happens over here is that the shulker box will get dispensed over here, 
and then its items are going to get sucked in and get sent directly to the main hall via this water stream. Now, if the chest is more than half full, then we want to uh, put in shulker boxes. But those shulker boxes have to be full. So here we have a comparator reading, and if the shulker box is full, then we send it directly to the main hall. But if it isn't full, then we need to send it to, mer to merging, which uh, I've already shown how you can merge shulker boxes by, in a previous video. But we need two shulker boxes to be merged. So in the meantime, while we wait for a second shulker box of that item type, we will send it to something called temp storage, which is on the other side over there. But I'll talk more about how this one works later. For now, just think of this as a queue to get merged. Um, now, another thing that can happen is that the chest might be completely full, in which case we want to send full shulker boxes to the bulk. So again, if the shulker box is full, then it gets sent to the bulk line over here. And if it's not full, then it gets sent once again to the temp storage. And finally, the fourth, cho that fourth choice that can happen is if the uh, shulker box empties itself while we are uh, sucking in items to throw them to the main storage, then the shulker box that is empty is going to get broken and sent in the empty box line. So given what this logic does, I think I've done a pretty neat job at compacting it, but it doesn't stop there. <laughs> There's even more. So problem by send in that sending items in a water stream, they might have some different timings due to the randomness of droppers. So here in typical uh, sto sorter based storages, randomness is acceptable because if a hopper misses an item or two, it doesn't matter. Those will simply get resorted a bit later. But here it's actually pretty bad because if a hopper misses an item, so here over here we have a bunch of uh, hoppers like this. If an item goes through the, uh, past the hopper and to the end of the water stream, then it would have to get resent all the way to the um, variable sorter, then through a decoder again, then through the logic again, and that starts to get really slow. So instead, what we have, we can show it uh, over here, is when we uh, input items in the water stream then they get perfectly timed using two uh, slime blocks. This is similar to what you do in nether storages. So we simply have a slime block clock over here, which dispenses the items and aligns them so that they have a perfect exact timing of eight game ticks between each of them. Um, now for the rest of the logic, afterwards the items are simply sent down this water stream over here. And then depending on the last three significant bits of the binary code, they are um, sent through a demultiplexer for the um, uh, for determining which is the correct uh, ice stream to go on to. And then for the uh, comparator reading from the chest, then we have something similar. So we have a multiplexer over here, which determines, uh, which basically selects the correct comparator reading out of the eight in the slice to send to the uh, brain over there. I also want to go into a bit more depth about the, the temporary storage, because this is actually a, quite an interesting data structure. So its goal is to hold a single shulker box per item type until a second box of that item type comes in, at which point it should send both of these to the merger. Now, the way the boxes are stored is that we have a whole bunch of chests over here, one per slice. And inside these chests, we have eight items because there are eight item types per slice. Now, these are just temporary items. They will be gradually replaced by shulker boxes as we add more and more boxes to the temp storage. Now, if there is a box instead of the uh, temporary item, then that box will be replaced by a new temporary items and both the boxes will be sent to the uh, merger. So the, if I can show this in action, now I've already inputted a binary code over here. So this is why uh, one of these slices over here is triggered. Now the box will go into some of the logic over here. Then the items that are in the chest will be cycled and now you can see them coming back into the chest. And now the box has been put inside the chest. This will hold the box until a new box of the same item type, so basically of the same binary code comes in, at which point it will take both of these boxes and send them to the merger. Now currently there's the item uh, here that was used to uh, store uh, to as a placeholder for the previous shulker box. Oh, here, they, they just came in. And that item usually would need to be recycled and sent back to this chest over here. But I didn't do that yet because, eh, it's trivial. All right, so there we go. We have our two boxes and now they would be merged. And then once they are merged, they would be sent back to the chest over there to be uh, stored. All right, so this is how this uh, main hall works. Uh, by now, I finished pretty much everything I uh, needed for the entire storage. 
So it's now time to assemble all of them together. So I'll do that and then hopefully in a few weeks I'll have the finished storage. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.